but actually we want to um, uh, modify the type of emotion you might have, okay, during the game. So, you take checks. Vi dico che siete registrati da quello che Qualsiasi cosa dite basta che non diceve un altro mi dite dai. Take the chess, take the chess. Pretty, pretty ok. Then you like transformer, you put transformer there. And you like it. Uh, does it feel uh, nicer? I always thought that, yeah, I always thought that uh, when I was a kid, I thought, I thought, you know, as soon as I was going to have the. As soon as I'm going to have the chess for the military, the soldiers, it will be much better. No, there was always the chess. But you might have a different attachment to them. Then Windows 2 or 3 came out. And I played this, which was very funny. I don't know whether you played them. They are very, 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 very nice. And when I saw them, I saw, oh my god, yes. Then I played one match, I killed everybody on the combination, and then I said, okay, that's it. So in a way, you can take the same thing and modify the feeling, even if it's, uh, I took the chest because it's, let's say, the less emotional per se, game, at least for me, and you can change it out. So here you choose yourself. the rules don't change, okay, rules cannot change, and it's not that in chess because you are lucky and you have, you know, the small soldier, you kill the tower. Oh, it's very funny when that means. Yeah, it becomes, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's basically the rock from Fantastic Four. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> that was the obvious move. <laughs> now, obviously, this changed the feelings, and then we have this one, which is probably the most famous one. chess in, uh, in uh, Star Trek, right? Well, there you will find the, the rules, but the idea is still that uh, the emotion can be, in a, in a game like chess, like, can be, uh, can be communicated by, by extra stuff that you add upon them, okay? So that's the point. So can you add uh, something upon uh, a mechanic to make it different, uh, with different emotion? So the idea is that everything you can change in those elements in, in the game itself without changing the rules or stuff like this. But the key contexts to gameplay are those dramatic elements. Okay? Obviously, the dramatic elements are the same as the formal elements. Okay? They are taken by the same stuff. It's not that you add something. But obviously, you can make... Uh, uh, you can make uh, the game with a completely different feelings by altering the uh, scenario. So suppose that uh, if you take, uh, uh, just for math, if you take Limbo, that is all black and dark, you put bright colors, it becomes something different. If you take in a, in, in an Ob and you put it dark, it becomes really dark, creepy in, in, in a weird way. 
So, as I said, it's basically the same elements you've seen, so it's another way to use them. Okay? So you can use it for sure the challenge. Because it's a, the challenge per se is what engages us. Okay? It's, it's, I don't play if I what I have to do is not engaging for me. So what the, what, the, what do we mean that as a uh, as challenge? Well, the thing is, my challenge, uh, uh, I, what I want to have is any task that is feasible, it enjoys me, it's not too easy, but it's something in the middle. So we are going back to the concept that we've seen with Federico. Okay? So if you talk to, play, if you talk to people and, and ask them where, why they were engaged, then you will identify tasks that were satisfied to complete. I can, you know, I can make. Um, it's really difficult to enter a flow or to well, be satisfied and engage in something that I really don't like. And actually, it requires a right amount of work. So it means not too easy, not definitely that too much hard. But you must be in, at the end. You must be say yes, I did it, and be satisfied. Okay. Counting cards, for instance, if I give you a pile of cards like this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, it's not that engaging, it's not that interesting to complete at the end. It could be different if I give you the cards and I give you some old, some, some holes where it becomes a game. So you change everything completely. So that, that's in a way the idea that you can more or less uh, uh, individualize the, the challenge. Note that uh, originally, when, when you had games, there was no individualization of the challenge. So I would go to an arcade, I would pay some money and play. Uh, invaders, Space Invaders was the same as Space Invaders and anybody could play. It was really bad and then you could play a little bit. Uh, the, the other guy were very good and they could uh, play a lot. There were no individualization. With the PC, everything changed. The, the, the big, uh, the big uh, let's say, uh, modification in the idea of play was that before, somebody uh, wanted to make money by my play from my play, so I, I should have played a little bit as possible, but uh, feeling rewarded as much as possible. At my home, as soon as I buy your game, who cares? I mean, uh, let, please let me let me let me play. And so it starts, for instance, in even in, in uh, Wolfenstein 3D, for instance, it was very famous for the type of challenge it would give you. You can select the challenge in any way you can uh, add uh, and variety the way. Uh, all the places in multiplayer uh, in multiplayer uh, games where you go there and you find everybody that is almost around your level. That's another type of individualization of the challenge. Uh, one, of the th one of the thing is that uh, challenge can be dynamic. You can uh, you can uh, you can try to uh, you can try to modify it. If you check out uh, the literature for uh, research in video games, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the individualization of the challenge and the adaptation of the game difficulty to the player is one of the major topic because it's a great tool. So obviously, when you change challenge, it's difficult to define uh, what we mean and what is the individual experience. So again, we go to Chisen Miyai. And basically, what he did, he did a huge study. And he said, uh, OK, uh, study people that were uh, having fun, they were enjoying, they were satisfied with what we were doing. And then he basically analyzed uh, everything and said, OK, these are more or less the points uh, where that are in common, all the people, despite the age, despite the sex, um, anything. That's what happens. For, for instance, the experience uh, usually occurs when we confront, we confront tasks that we have a, challenge to, a chance to complete. If you put myself in front of a master of chess, I'm, I really I would be like, yeah, sure. I would be like, this. I would never, never ever try to do that. Uh, one of the things is, it's very interesting. 
is that uh, uh, typically you have a sense of control and uh, one of my mm, the ex uh, one of the examples I write more is Mario Kart in a, okay, one, if you play simulation race if you are very good you feel in control you feel the car, you feel the gear, you feel everything in, in Super Mario you are bouncing around you almost have no control, right? so that's true, you might feel that you don't have control to do but you <coughs> still feel that you can have some control so what happens is that in any, in any case you must feel that you are uh, you can do something. Otherwise, you, you don't have any 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 engagement in that. It's not like the pushing, people pushing around you stay like this. You say, oh, no, well, they're very funny. Oh, but yeah, okay. So there, there are points that are coming to all of that. Obviously, he made up the theory about all the measurements. Okay. So he said, okay, in what I've seen, and it was based on interviews, and it was based not on games, okay? It was based on, uh, it was positive psychology. He wanted to know why people sometimes, when they work, they're really happy, and they're, they're almost time passes and by, and I said, oh my God, uh, everything just, oh, we have to go home, really? So he said, okay, what, the, what he, he said, he said, the, the combination of these elements that we found in all the experience that causes this sense of deep enjoyment it's so, it's so important that people feel like uh, yes, it, it's worthwhile for me to uh, do a lot and uh, I'm almost a don't feel and it's typically the, the sensation you have when you do something and uh, you know you are completely absorbed in some point, you are completely absorbed. It, it, it seems like uh, you know two minutes passed and it was one hour. Another time, it's like when they show in the movie, time freezes. It seems immediately long. It's uh, and the moment expands. And so, as we already see, the idea is that uh, you are something here. And typically, since your progress as a well, uh, prog uh, people progress not linearly. They don't do like this, but they are basically. Either you are, you are playing a game that is too challenging, a little bit more too challenging than your capability, then it's uh, like this one, then you improve, but it's not that you are continually improving. It's like kind of stepwise curve. And actually, as, as Federico said, uh, more or less everybody is trying to uh, keep the players here. Uh, more here for some players, more here for some players. I, I wonder right now. I just wonder what, where Candy Crush is there as a, as a thing because for me it's something around the, around there. And it's really it's really interesting. It's, uh, I mean, every how every game interprets uh, this this concept is very interesting. For instance, for instance, sorry, I, I, I like to go back. Um, for instance, what it, what happens in Candy Crush is sometimes you cannot sort of. Uh, um, overcome one, uh, one level. Thanks. So what happens is that probably your ability is too low for, uh, for, for, your, for the challenge that it's here. So your solution is pay. Okay? So pay, the challenge decreases because you have the bonus and then you can still there, go there. It's very interesting as a principle. I don't think uh, she sent me any thought about that. So, uh, the idea is to get this balance between challenge and ability and uh, frustration and boredom. Okay. And so, these are, these are all, all the things that uh, more or less are described in the, in the flow. So, typically, as I said, everything becomes uh, almost automatic. For me, for instance, at some point in some FPS, I feel like on fire. I say, "Oh my God, I can do everything." So, and one of the one of the things is that you are so engaged that you are not uh, aware you are becoming one with the with the with the game, for instance. Okay. And then there, are, uh, what is this? What is this? Uh, uh, what is interesting about the, the whole stuff? Well, uh, in, in, in game flow, when you're in flow, you don't remember tax, laundry, and nothing. You are completely there. And the other thing is that there is a paradox here, which is very interesting in, in a sense. That you have, okay, 
you have you play, but you want to exercise control in the theoretical situation. Okay, so as I said, you are enjoying yourself if you feel that you are doing something. Because otherwise, if I'm if I'm just the victim of something else, I, I really don't enjoy it. But so I like that one. So, but on the other hand, to enjoy myself, I put I put myself in a more difficult situation than I usually do. Okay. So I know that I really suck at Battlefield 3. Okay, I, I know it. I know. I know it. And on the other hand, it would not be nice if uh, Massimo comes to my house and show. See, no, no, it's very easy. I show you. Tu, 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 tu. And I look. Or when you play with kids, they say, I show you how to do it. And then they play. You say, mm, very nice. I don't like to have no control, so I like to control. But on the other hand, at the same time, to have that control, I put myself inside the game, and I'm completely, uh, uh, completely sucked. Uh, suck <coughs> so it's basically, I cannot be feel that this, uh, this uh, experience of control, I, 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 unless uh, the outcome is unsure, and actually I'm not in control, right? Because I don't know how much good you are at code or other FPS, but do you really feel in control several times? So just to have some idea of the use of dramatic elements, did you play Amnesia? Yes. <laughs> if you think about that. It's like, for me, it's like the unfinished swan, okay? Uh, it's one of those games that uh, mechanically, if I have to program it, like, uh, it doesn't make much, much difference than... Uh, yeah, it doesn't... It doesn't make much difference than, uh, than, other, than other games, FPS. But on the other hand, everything about uh, the, the feeling around, that's something that makes me give me a different feel. For instance, uh, do we do we agree that uh, as the mechanic, as the mechanic, uh, the single mission of every FPS like Battlefield or COD is basically the same as Dead Space, more or less, right? We agree. The mechanical part is the same. Okay, you shoot around, you have some stops, you do some stuff, then you orders, you go ahead and see. But the sensation that gives you, at least, at least to me, uh, uh, Battlefield and uh, Dead Space, they're completely different. Actually, the Dead Space is, uh, I was discussing with Daniele, Dead Space is one of the games that uh, if you play, for instance, for me, at night, then to go to sleep, it's, uh, well, I usually play with the headphones in the dark, in the pitch dark, because uh, I cannot uh, wake up my, my, uh, my girlfriend. But then, it's really, apart from the increase, because at some point it seems that the noises are coming from around the house, uh, it's really creepy. And I, I go to bed completely agitated, okay? And I think, for instance, here you see one, one possibility, yeah, that's it. That's useless because it's completely pitch dark and the screen is not the best. But it gives the idea. Uh, if you play the, if you play the, if you play the, for instance, the Dead Space for me, it's really interesting to see, uh, you know, the the earth around here, and then the use of of the breathing in in the in the game is very interesting. And as I told you, it's basically was uh, already used in infra games for the first Alone in the Dark actually, and it was really, really that was really creepy. Right now you can laugh at it, but when you I usually again play with the headphones. Uh, even in the 80s, that game was really, really, really creepy. And there are all these are there are they are, they are really they are really interesting. Another paradox is that uh, in a way uh, you are here that you are playing, you forget about everything, even about yourself, about anything you have to do. But on the other hand, by playing, your perceptions inside the games are completely expanded. So another paradox is that uh, the set, uh, you, um, 
you're yourself expand, you're expanding through acts, but on the other hand, uh, why you're forgetting about yourself because you're into the game. Okay. Uh, as I say, what happens what, when all this happens, the activity becomes autotelic. So it means it means you really enjoy to do it and you are completely into that. And there is no reason to do it except that you enjoy it. It's not that you're playing some stuff because there is a go really a goal. I mean, there is a goal inside the game, but there's not a, a, a goal uh, for your life in that. I mean, unless you do it professionally. Uh, so, what is the point? The point <coughs> is that uh, when you are designing a game, uh, you should have uh, really clear into in your mind this. One of the problems for me, even in, think about this, you can make the experiment, that's why we make breakout. You can make the experiments in breakout. What is the right difficulty level to play? Okay, it's not that easy to determine. And you can make experiments with friends. For instance, you can take the game. Actually, you can also uh, download it on Android because he has the, the touch. Uh, you can go out and check out your, well, don't try to, to hit on your, but uh, on poor man. Uh, but you can go out and say, okay, I really wish that all the people I don't know, the freshmen, could play this game really easily. And they could do at least 10 levels. Because in your business model, you are going to make them pay during the levels, or you are making them pay in some way. Then you have to take your target audience, and you, are, you can try to modify the game and find the right difficult level. It's really difficult. To, it's really it's really difficult to uh, concept. Even if it, even if with a very simple game like a breakout. Uh, one thing is how do you eliminate the distraction and the fear of failure? Say if I see that the game is too difficult and I have to uh, have a really fear to fail, then basically I'm blocked. Uh, the example is uh, RIP, RIP, or uh, the game I told you where you can live only once, okay? Where uh, that you can download on your game and all the game you can basically train. At some point, you can really play, and it will be <coughs> at that point uh, you die in your, your score. So one of the points is really to create this fear of failure that makes you train a more than play. <coughs> and it's really paradoxical that, that you are training to play, but you are fearing to play because it's going to be one play only. So. Uh, play in general, as, as it is, uh, it can be viewed as a freedom of movement within a more rigid structure. That's uh, what is, called, is usually called play. Uh, call um, play is uh, one of the things that we can uh, leverage on to modify the feeling. So one of the things that we uh, one of the things that we ask of yourself. So what is play? So if you ask people, it's also say something like it's not directed, it's spontaneous, it's scripted, it's loud, etc. Uh, one of the things that uh, uh, you can have this is from rules of play. If I'm not correct, I'm, I'm not wrong. This is a classification of the types of play that are uh, that are available. So in a way, in a way, so the type of play. It's, uh, for instance, if you have a free form of play, it's like children when you put them there, you throw them up, uh, throw up, uh, throw them up, and or uh, you're uh, showing them around, making things that are completely uh, uh, fearful, at least if, you, if they do it, uh, to you, at least. Uh, but if you, actually, if you want to have them in a rule base, then you have all the uh, Adrenaline uh, crazies that goes uh, skiing, uh, well, skiing, I mean skiing really, uh, skiing, uh, free skiing. Uh, what is interesting about the play, it's the players, okay? So there are, um, in rules of play in other books, there is a lot of uh, characteristics about the players, a uh, lot of specifications about the players. Some of them you remember in the form uh, axis here, the schema that I show. But generally speaking, the point is this. If you want to create a tension in the game, you have to understand which is your player and what he's going to uh, do and what you want to have uh, to do. So if I want to do the explorer, 
how could I challenge and create a different feeling for the explorer? Any suggestion? Any idea? I don't I don't come with an expert with an example right now, but any idea. So you have an explorer, so it's a guy that wants to go around the around around the world and seeing stuff inside the world and want to see. Any idea? Any suggestion? What can we do? Well, I think, go. Given a rounded word when he doesn't know what, is, what comes next in order. Yeah. So, so you mean I, I put a border? No. Uh, I, I think maybe uh, unbounded. Yes. Like um, Minecraft. Algorithm generated board. Yeah. And if you go and you don't know what comes next. So you. How can I generate a different. Okay, that's a typical Minecraft, no? Okay, let's take Minecraft and change the feeling. <coughs> can create some uh, easter eggs in the world. No? Yeah, but it's not still the feeling. Easter eggs are really important, actually. But for instance, just it came to my mind, for instance, Don't Star is almost an infinite world, but it gives you a completely different feeling. If on the dark, uh, even uh, even in Minecraft, you can uh, you can die, and there is the, the sun that goes down, etc. But if uh, really dead monsters, like uh, really creepy monsters, comes out at night, and uh, when the day is completely there, you have a certain feeling. Is on, if on the other hand the night is night and nice and the stars are there, beep, 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 chip, 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 chip. all the birds and animals are there, then you feel another, another, another feeling. Okay. So uh, one of the things I was wondering is that if you take an explorer and you give uh, borders that are really scary, then if you go through a borders, you cannot come back. Like uh, think about Colombo. Uh, when he went down with the ships, he didn't know when he could, could come back. Then it makes a, a, a huge difference between that one, that scenario, and me going with both uh, to Greece. Okay? So, and again, uh, I get a storyteller that loves and creates lips, world fantasy, and imagination. What can I do to, uh, to create, uh, to make the feeling, change the feeling of the game for you? Okay? Uh, as we said, uh, as an exercise, always think about when you, when you listen to a lecture. Which are, there are very, very, um, especially in this lecture, there are very uh, simple stuff. And generally speaking, there are simple stuff. Uh, we are technical people, okay? So we usually see things like this as simple. But on the other hand, the important part is to map this concept to, into an example. So for me, it's very. Uh, so, well, competitor, we know. Explorer, we know. Collector, acquire items, trophies, and knowledge. An example. Okay. Pokemon. Okay. Pokemon. Uh, I never played it. Achievement, place for five levels, achievement, love levels, levels, whatever. The Joker, does not take the game series, place for fun of pain, mind and doing serious player. Oh, can be crash at work, people are, are really like that. Anything, anything. <laughs> Artists. Like uh, tiny weeks. Tiny weeks, yes. Minecraft again. You can, uh, Minecraft uh, again, even if uh, artistically speaking it's probably uh, designer, I don't like, really like it. No? There's a game for Wii in which uh, you are a blob, uh, uh, you can uh, paint uh, for the Yeah, series. probably I've seen it, yeah, that's very nice. Or even uh, there is the Mickey Mouse something. The first one was very bad, as you told me. Well, at least I do was uh, <laughs> But I think you can see. Um, director wants to be in charge, director play well. Even if I want to be a director, even any start of game, RPS, it's okay. Etc. Etc. What's that? Gary is more. The mod for the source and line the way Ah, okay. So uh, one of the, the big differences that uh, they say that there is a, the, uh, that they make in, in, game, in gamers is creator and participant. <coughs> so the one that just uh, just was and the one that like to play, but actually from time to time they can be they can change their they can change also in, uh, in uh, they can change uh, uh, they can change role. Okay. Can,
Uh, one thing that is very interesting as it creates the dramatic, uh, dramatic feelings is this one, this peacemaker. And it's a uh, very simple game. Well, do you think that Palestinian and uh, all the stuff is really easy to solve? Please go ahead and do it. And the idea is that they make you with the real, with real uh, videos and they give you this level of tension because when you see riots, real riots, not uh, dummies that go around and you have a different uh, One of the things that creates tension, that it creates drama and modifies the, the thing is obviously the premise. You really feel well and nice when you put up the guitar for, uh, for your preferred games. So if you consider the basic and you consider this type of description of the game, so you have one set of data, another set of data, and some kind of the data exchange itself and uh, the, the, the data win analysis you win. You don't expect this one, but actually it's the same. But it's deeper and completely different. If you think about that, that's very interesting. Probably, probably people will, will not agree, but for me it's interesting. It's really interesting that, for instance, wrestling, all the drama is based about uh, the other stuff, not the fighting. Because if I want to see the fighting, I, I see UFC. I mean, I don't see wrestling, right? Uh, So in a way, in a way, the premise also establishes this position of the story. There, there was no story, but in a way, they say the exposition sets up the time and place and the character. Um, I see several games do it uh, in different ways. I have to say that uh, in, a, in a very nice way, uh, Angry Birds does it in one minute without bothering the people. Also giving you a completely crazy idea of a story. I don't know exactly. So in a way, <coughs> if you check out the, the start of the game, they just they just say that uh, you know they just tell you. Yeah. Apart from this one, it's, uh, if you check out the, the trailer, then you, what you see is that basically the the kids. Steal the eggs and they are going to revenge. Which is really weird because green pigs that steal, the, that steal eggs from birds is really rare in, in nature. One of the best, uh, for me at least, it's Rita, but it's a major uh, in this. Because as I said just another time, if I, if I see this, I think it's Tarka because it's my, my, my favorite all time. But as soon as I put my headphones on and I check out this video, I just feel a marine that is going to give you this tension. It's also, it's also very nice, well, probably you are too young, but for instance, for, a, for, a, for many years, for tens, uh, tens of years, uh, probably 30, all the science fiction was completely clean. Okay, if you check out Star Trek, it's completely, everything is spotty, okay? And for instance, any movie that came out a certain period, it came out completely clean. Everything was spattle. In the future, everyone was spattle. They would kill each other with lasers, but everything was spattle. Which was the first movie you made, uh, you know, crappy stuff and bad stuff oh, and yeah. you made Was that? Oh, yeah. Was that? Oh, yeah. Uh, no, Star Wars. But you were very near because they are they are two years apart. Okay, Star Wars was the first one where this uh, decadent uh, empire. And actually, if you check out the roads, they were crappy, and uh, you know there was this guy that uh, with a laser sa saber that was not working. If you check out all the movies before, it was completely different. And. Uh, and Star Trek does a lot of uh, use, uh, usage of this one. It's a, a dirty, kind of dirty and uh, crappy future. Which is completely different. 
Nope. You know that uh, Sega was the first one to make. Uh, so, and then if you are left with something like this one, it's completely different story. Uh, you know that Sega had, uh, is considered to have one of the most brilliant idea to create the character to be empathic with the with the player in a very particular way. So in, I don't remember in one of these games they introduced this stuff that if you play, the guy was going around. But then Sonic was going around. But then if you stop, the guy will stay. Instead of staying here, like all the game they would stay like this, okay, or like this. They would stay. It was brilliant because it's uh, too cold. It's you know, it's not like uh, how can I make it feel emotion? No, it's when you put somebody there watching you like this one, and it's very interesting. Okay, so as I said. Is, uh, it's, uh, it's really, it's really something that, uh, and you can actually check out uh, what, what, what is the premise and what are the way to show you the premise in, in, in different places. So the idea is that, uh, in a way, uh, you want to make the guy, uh, to, to make the players start to play with giving all, giving all the information that are needed, and at the same time, at the same time, to give, give, him as a, give the player sensations and a way uh, to uh, unify all, the, all what we will find afterwards. So suppose that there is a creepy kid, suppose that if I go there and I jump myself with the, uh, with the stuff and I go there, pop, 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 and I feel this, and suddenly the, the character, the video opens, and I'm in a completely different world with a different feeling. It's not uh, so charged of uh, passion or for uh, attention, then everything is, is really bad. So, and the other way is the character, but then it's, uh, yeah, you know, there is, there are several type of character. So you have the psychological character in which you hear your, fear, your fears and desire. So if you think about uh, amnesia, you feel yourself like there with the, uh, with the lady with a character going around. Uh, you can, you can uh, for instance, uh, if you like war games, and they give you, you are a Churchill, and you have to protect the UK, then you feel like that kind of character. And it's, there are several ways to, to understand and to use the character per se. In a way, in a way that you have, you can have, uh, you can make a decision in your character. Actually, you can make also a decision to have not to have a character or to have a symbolic character. If you play the, um, the impossible game, you're a, a triangle or a square. No, you're a square. You're a square going around. Thomas was alone. You are a tum 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 something that is completely going around. Um, it's a completely bouncy square, so it's very simple. Uh, the only thing that you have to, to understand is that when you, you, you devise a character, the character for your game, which would be a candy, you still have to have uh, a balance between the, the, its practical functionality in, in the game and the fact that you want people to feel something for the, for, for the character. And obviously you can either... Uh, You can define it in, in, different, in different ways, okay? You can have well-defined uh, or just a little defined traits and uh, less and less. Obviously, the, if you think about, uh, depending on the game, you have the, the traits that are really, really strongly defined. I think that, for instance, in the single missions of uh, Call and Battlefield series, uh, the character is always well defined, especially in the trailers. But actually, you never, you never, uh, you never enjoy it at all. Even the, does that space show the face of the guy that you are using, or you never see it? Maybe you never see it. Could be. So when you are defining your character, you have to answer four key questions. Okay. 
obviously this one is greater to the goal, to the other formal element. Okay? Uh, what the player, obvious players do, you can say, I want to kill my character. That would be a nice game. You're trying to kill your character, and actually you cannot do it. There is a, there is a game for iPhone. Uh, I don't know whether it's 0 0.99. Uh, where you're, uh, you are in an office space, and you have to kill your character in an awful way. But you have to find a way to kill yourself. So you, you, you put your the head inside the, the coffee machine. You start. So you are around in an office, and you say, coffee machine, you go there, and the character go there, and you start doing some weird stuff. But it's really difficult to kill it. <laughs> I say kill it because it's a man. And also, you can actually also consider what, they, what people fear. And then there is the story, okay? That's uh, uh, the story. The outcome of the story is exactly as the outcome of the game. It must be a certain because you know it's really so. So you can play the Battle of England uh, with airplanes, but if you are sure that the English will win, then you don't play more or less. Uh, in many games, story is actually, is actually the to backstory. So you have the the, 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 the videos in between. Uh, it's, it's a common usage. And if you consider your storytelling, if you think about, uh, I, I, if I did not read the, the, the concept so far, actually I will send them today uh, to everybody. Uh, you can actually design your storytelling, and we are going to make a lecture about this, with a linear flow, with a network, operate, and, and with a tree, some kind of uh, lost episode around, you can have uh, several stuff. For instance, I was uh, really... Uh, did you play Black Rain? Uh, no, Black Rain, sorry, Heavy Rain. Mm -hmm. uh, did you play... Uh, Spec Ops The Line? Did you find that... Because Spec Ops The Line is one of the latest that said five different finals. Uh, very branching stories. And uh, so, you start playing and you say, at, at any moment there will be a branch. And so I will go there and there will be a branch, and I will, I will, uh, I will, uh, I will uh, take one branch, then I go back and play the other ones, okay? Uh, there is a spoiler. Did you use the, um, the phosphor? The phosphor, when I have uh, the combat phosphor. Uh, yes. Did you use it? Did you try not to use it? No. Because there is the most dramatic part is when you have to you, you are going to you you have to decide whether to use it or not to use the phosphor bomb. That's a very good question. Yeah, because uh, basically most of the people thinking it's a branching game. I, 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 there is must be a branch. And that's a clear branch because there are innocent people in front of you, and you can and you either say I'm going to use the bombs against the civilians. They are also terrorists somewhere, enemies. They are not terrorists, enemies somewhere. But actually there is a huge amount of civilians, so I don't use it. And I can tell you, uh, it's a spoiler, you are going to feel bad all the game long afterwards. <laughs> or you don't use it. But it seems that there is no branching there, okay? So what was the very disappointment that I ended the game? And basically all the branches, because this one is the major branch, but no, no, nobody I know ever, not I am going to use that one. But all the branches, like here, they are only in the last three minutes of the game. So it's really disappointing. Because they say it's a very branching story, but actually, in the last three minutes, you decide one, one, one. So it's very. But for instance, if you have a game that in your mind that it has a story, you can actually. For this out, and we're going to do that one. And of course, the world will give you also a sensation about what is going on. What it's going to be, you can create a, a world that is a different, uh, the different ways. Uh, in a different way, give you a different sensation. So, for instance, uh, it was very interesting. I think it was Ubisoft or was uh, Milestone came here two years ago, and they discussed the fact that when they built up uh, uh, GTA Liberty City, they basically took all the uh, graphic artists to New York and basically to copy the themes of New York into that. Sometimes you don't have uh, any issue about this one. I mean, like the world is almost defined. What is interesting is that uh, there is a way where narrative develops. 
and also how the organic develops. Not uh, not breakout, breakout no. But many games, even uh, if you have uh, any arcade games you have played, they usually develop in this way. And I'm not talking, the important part is not, I'm not talking about the whole game. I'm not, I'm talking generally speaking about the level. So, um, that space, it's a big, big, big game, about uh, 11 uh, levels, so to say, or 11 missions. And every time you are there, you come out, there is a kind of uh, place where everybody tells you, you should go there. Okay, I'll go there. Uh, you go there and you are all happy and nothing happens. Even if you feel that when you are going back from the same road again, it will be tough. So, increase number of monsters, increase number of monsters, increase number of monsters. Monster, monster, monster. Suddenly, you finally kill all the monsters, and suddenly, what you have is a complete relaxation. Okay? So, this is exactly how, you know, if you think about the crime stories, books are the same, you know. You see you're on the characters, oh my god, somebody's got killed. Oh, oh, investigate, investigate, investigate. Aha, I take you like uh, Ellery Queen or others. I take you everybody in a room and I will tell you who is going to be. And then there is always, oh my oh father, you did it again. And stuff like this and all. Or otherwise, it's typically looting after the, the thing. You kill, you're in a party, you go there, ta -ta 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 -ta. Fight, 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 and then looting everywhere, everywhere for everything, right? So, this is one structure. This is one level. If you put two levels together, and you put the fact that you have to follow the, uh, the increasing level of uh, difficulty, because otherwise it becomes boring, what you have is that the structure of a game is typically this one, it's, a, it's a stepwise, like the one that you see in Flow. When you are beyond boarding, oh, you are a marine. Uh, please go ahead and do the first mission. I do the first mission. There is a climax. The duty. I can rest. That's my rest period. And then the next mission is start from a difficult level that is after, and then it goes like here. Okay? So that's typically how it does. And it's all based on the same narrative that you find everywhere. One thing, for instance, it could be try to change this one. One way to make a, a different, completely different game it could be to change this one. It could be very interesting in that sense. So, think about uh, how does it work well. Donkey Kong is very simple. <coughs> you start with a movie, you start with a, at the lower level, the, the, the things that are coming down are up there, so it, it is low. You, up, you go up and up, 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 it becomes difficult, difficult, difficult. You think that you solved, the guy goes up, and that's it. <coughs> okay? 